horse racing in Mauritius is like a shocker in Europe, you know? You keep learning every day in this game. No one can say that he knows all. There is a saying in racing that uh, good horses make good jockeys. I believe good horses make also good trainers. You know, horses are very lovely animals. Um, you have to connect with them, you know, or else we wouldn't be doing it. And, and the hard work that we put into the horses, yeah, you have to, a lot of it's love. I love them as my kids. Four horse, four kids, same. I give them same care, same love, same affection. Tucked on the easternmost tip of the African continent, Mauritius is an island nation known for its pristine white sandy beaches that overlook the Indian Ocean. But unknown to many, this country plays host to a sporting event that has been an open secret for over 200 years. Horse racing. Working before the break of dawn, horse trainer Amardip Sidial is overseeing the training of his horses for an upcoming race. Despite being an inexperienced trainer at this level, he is trying to emulate his rookie form of last year, where he stirred a storm inside the Mauritian horse racing circles by winning several important races. My name is Amardip Sidial. I was born in the district Flak. We call it Palma. I love horse racing. I love horses. I love it, you know. I love doing this. Equally preparing for the task is Ramapati Gajida, a 73-year-old veteran trainer who has been involved in horse racing from childhood. His family has been in horse racing for over a hundred years. A passionate lover of horses, Ramapati's desire to win is so strong that he never misses a day of practice even after all these years. My name is Ramapati Gajadar, Gajida, and uh, I'm more commonly known as Soon in Mauritius. Uh, it's just fortuitous that I am today at the head of the Gajida stable and also the trainer of the Gajidao State. For 43-year-old Amar, his love and passion for horses started when he was a young boy. When I finished my uh, secondary school, and I come to see some few trainers here to give me a chance to work with horses, to know about horses. And then uh, from there, I went to work with horses at Floreal Center. Then I went to Ireland. I did one year in Ireland. I came back. Then after that, I did my own demand with MTC the Mauritius Step Club, to get my own stable. Perceived as an amateur, Amar feels he has a lot to prove, and therefore the upcoming race is very important for him. I, I am very patient with them, I love them. I wait for them to eat, and, um, and sometimes I give hand to my groom to groom their horses. 
Slated only a few days away, both Amar and Ramapati would like to win the classic horse race known as the Barbie Cup. But to achieve this feat, they have to line up against 14 other Mauritian trainers who have the same aspirations of winning this prestigious cup. Between Amar and Soon, as Ramapati is fondly known, one will sing a victory song, while the other bows to throngs of defeat after the race day. Horse racing in Mauritius was started in 1812 by Sir Robert Farquhar of Britain as a way to encourage socialization. After the British had defeated the French in battle for the island, Sir Farquhar was looking for a way in which to unite the two communities as one nation. An avid lover of horses, he decided to introduce horse racing to ease the tension through friendly sporting rivalry. Over the years, horse racing has grown to become a sports obsession in Mauritius. Easily comparable to major football leagues from Europe, the Mauritian horse racing season starts in March of each year and ends in December. Horse racing in Mauritius is, is like a, a shocker in Europe, you know. We, when we don't have racing uh, off-season, December, January, February, people don't know what to do. Every Saturday they have nothing to do and they are boring and they're waiting for when the race is going to start here, racing going to start here. But before the horses are ready to race, there's a whole lot that goes on behind the scenes. Horse training is not easy and can take up to three months of intensive coaching for a horse to be ready to race. Currently, Amar is hoping to spur his love for horses into a winning formula for a race only several days away. Finding a horse capable of winning races is the first step towards glory for any trainer. Nearly all the racing horses in the country are sourced from South Africa, which has a more advanced breeding system than Mauritius. We mostly purchase a horse from South Africa. He's not far from Mauritius. Uh, it's the same uh, climate. We have to do two counting, 20 days in South Africa and 20 days in Mauritius. Uh, might be some day, sometimes it's going low for quarantine. That's a book, sir. Hey! Just like in any competitive sports discipline, every trainer has their own unique method of instruction. But common to all, Coaching starts very early each morning for both the trainers and the horses. Listen, I have to wake up early every day, 3 o'clock, 3.30. Start get preparation to get ready the horse to bring them on the truck. So we have to see if the horse is, we eat everything, or they left the levers, water, and the shoes, everything is fine, they fix well. So from there, the groom take out the horse and walk him from a few moments, five to ten minutes, and then bring him back to the, the box, and then get him ready, and they pull out to, to go to work, trot them. If you have gallops, they gallop them. We see that every gallop we do on Tuesday and Friday, and race, racing day is Thursday. Sunday is normal day, off, but we still have to feed the horse to pull them out to just to have some fresh air and everything. A trot is when a horse is ridden slowly, while a gallop is when the horse is running at full pace.
Each horse is assigned to a groom whose main job is to ensure its overall well-being on behalf of the trainer. Amar's most experienced groom is Rungi Olsing. For Rungi Olsing, he loves the horses the same way he loves his children. First of all, if you want to be a good groom, you must first love horses. Love them first of all, to become friend of them. And uh, slowly, slowly it will come. They will like you, you know, when you are near them. For me, there is no difference. Because I love them as my kids. Four horse, four kids, same. I give them same care, same love, same affection. We have to be here very early in the morning. We have to be here at 4.30. First thing, we see the manja. If they had all their feet that we gave last night, this is the most important thing, if they have their feet. And then we look after them. Is everything just true is here, the horse is getting well, he's looking perfect. And we pull them out for a walk for five minutes. And then we put the saddle, we wait for the trainer and the rider to come. And the, when the uh, track is open at five, we just start. A form of relaxation after a morning of training, the horses are taken to a sandbox to play and relax. The horse is then washed and taken back to the docks for grooming by its attendant. Look, you have to follow uh, the horses eating well, eating well. They're doing their water. The dropping is okay. You know, it's not too dry. So always we have to see there is refuge. The bedding is good. The fan is turning on. We have to give instruction to the veterinary what to do. Um, after the gallop, after the training, um, on Tuesday, like uh, you have to do the entries. Okay, you have to phone the owners personally to inform them the horse is running. A racing horse is fed up to 15 kilograms of carbohydrates, vitamin supplements, and hay each day to build up on its stamina and nutrition. For a racing horse, the hoof is the most important part of its body. Without a good hoof, the horse cannot be able to run. Therefore, horseshoes are put to protect it from injury and disease. But if uh, there's a horse, he got some problem on his hoof. He can't even walk, he can't even run, he can't even race. So this is very important, the hoof. Because he's standing on his four hoof. That's why. This is very important. No hoof, no horse. <laughs> Unlike last year, when Amar had already won several races by this period, two months into the season, he is yet to win even a single race. As a consolation, Amar is not alone in having a bad start to a season. A serial winner over the years, Ramapati is having his fair share of problems making it to the podium positions this far. He too is yet to rack up a win. A history-making trainer, in 2017, Ramapati became the first person in 83 years to win all the four classic races in a season. The classic races are the royalty races in the Mauritian horse racing calendar. I must say that I've been very lucky to train some nice horses. 
you keep learning every day in this game. No one can say that he knows all. But then, you know, if you know the basics, horses come up by themselves. And there is a saying in racing that uh, good horses make good jockeys. I believe good horses make also good trainers. With one classic race already lost, Ramapati is under pressure to bring home the Barbie Cup, the second classic race of the calendar only one oh, week okay, away. Okay. A self-taught trainer, he acquired his training skills from kin who came before him. For us, racing is a sport. We have not been to any academy or to any professional uh, institution to learn how to train. We, we learn it uh, uh, on the spot by learning from our elders. In fact, it was my grandfather who, way back in 1904, that introduced the family in racing by buying a horse so that he could get access to the people who, who used to control the finance in Mauritius. And, and in this way, uh, uh, he started racing. My father was at the head of the stable for, from 1956 until the year he passed away in 1988, and then my uncle took over. And since 2001, my uncle asked me to take over as trainer, and he passed away in 2005, and after that I became the head of the, the stable. So I am the, I'm the owner now and also the trainer of the Gajidao stable. Today, the only active members of the stable are myself and my two sons and the family, including my two grand grandchildren. Formerly an uninhabited island, Mauritius became a sugar planting Dutch colony from 1638 until its abandonment in 1710. The French quickly settled five years later, only to be ousted by the British through battle in 1810. Needing cheap labor for their sugar plantations after the abolishment of slavery in 1835, the British started a work system known as indentured labor. Through this system, Laborers were brought in from other countries on a five-year plantation work contract. My great-grandfather came here as an indentured laborer. He was a milkman. So he was getting access to certain well-placed people by selling milk to them. And then he bought the horse. He was at one stage considered to, uh, to be one of the richest men in Mauritius. He owned two of the biggest estates in Mauritius, sugar mills. He made so much money that the next generation, instead of building on it, they have been eating more, more, more the capital than, than building on it. So uh, the Gajeda family, you know, is a pretty large family. The fortune has been divided and subdivided and sub, sub, subdivided. So, so, you know, we don't there is no Gajida in Mauritius who ever who has been, been as rich as he is, but we are still reaping a lot of what he's sowed for us. Still standing as a reminder to the indentured labor system is the Apravasi Ghat, a building complex which literally means the immigration depot in Hindi. Built in 1849, it was used to process indentured Indians, the largest source of labor coming to work in Mauritius. The indentured labor program was popular at the time because of its free offer on transport for laborers. Many Indians signed up and by 1923, over half a million plantation laborers had arrived in the country. Ramapati's great-grandfather was one of these, like many other Mauritians, of course. 
Erected in honor of the system, these two footprints inside the complex are used to commemorate the moment a laborer was finally cleared to work inside the country. A famous tourist destination, the Apravasi Ghat attracts people from around the world who come to visit this small island nation. Over the years, laborers from other countries such as China, Malaysia, and also from mainland Africa would come to work in Mauritius. Since the Gajita stables was established over a century ago, they have continued to dominate horse racing in Mauritius. My son, Gopal, he is a doctor. He qualified in, in England. He practiced for 17 years. He has given up his practice to give me a helping hand in the stable and look after the family's business. So uh, I feel much more reassured with his presence here. So sure? he does. <laughs> <laughs> So he does most of the basic works yeah. and I get all the laurels when the horses win. <laughs> Apart from having a good horse, a stable must also have a jockey to ride a horse into victory. Ramapati's chief jockey is 29-year-old New Zealand national Daniel Stackhouse, while Lamar's chief jockey is 39-year-old Swapnil Rama. These two gentlemen have the onerous task to bring victory to their respective employers in a few days' time. I came uh, to be a jockey because a bit of my uh, parents, especially my father, who was a like a, like horses every every Saturday, like to go to racing, and me too. I follow him a bit, uh, like. Um, start looking at horses, like horses, and uh, when I was a kid, growing up, I start like, want to ride a horse now, and my father, my father say, let's try, let's see if you can, you give it a try. Then he bring me to a man who trained me a bit how to ride a horse. Then he said, yeah, why not, you can, just, Go to the MTC. Uh, tell them that you you want to be a jockey if you if you can. Then there was a trial. I was uh, selected, and I was very happy. From then uh, I start my apprentice. I'm very happy. I win about 150 50 races here, and I'm very proud of it. And uh, and I, I think I I can ride a bit for about. Uh, four or five years more, we'll see. He's a lightweight jockey, he's doing 50 kilo. So when he got a ride for any stable, he rides the horse honestly, you know, at his best capacity he, he can bring, you know, to the result. With the race only three days away, a trainer must select a runner in a process called nomination. This is basically a selection of horses that will run the race and the jockey to ride it. If you have two or more horses in the race, you have to put the instructions in writing because each horse is expected to run on its merits. So I just have to write down the, with the concept of the jockey's riding, the instructions, and then it will be for the jockeys to do their best to bring, bring the horse home. Working on last-minute strategies and training, both Amar and Ramapati are hopeful that their training for the week will be enough to hand them victory come race day. Finally, it is the morning of the race. Just like in any sporting competition, Fans from all walks of life trickle into the race course early in anticipation for the day ahead. Interestingly, there is no entry fee for the spectators.
dressed for the day, Amar is ready and waiting for the races to start. Meanwhile, Ramapati and his family have already settled into their watching booth. This is one event that brings his whole family together. With nine races lined up today, both Amar and Ramapati are optimistic to win at least one race. The first race trophy of the day is the Day to Remember Cup. Run across 1400 meters, Amar has not fielded any runner and will be sitting this race out as he waits the second race. For this race, Ramapati has fielded a horse called the Third Man, jockeyed by Sunil Basant. Athletes in their own right, the horses are paraded through a quadrangle for all to see before being ushered into the starting docks. The third man is drawn on dock two. And the race is on. Off to a good start, Bussant is keeping pace in the middle of the pack. Towards the last bend, he tries to break out, but there is no way through for him. In the end, Basant only manages to bring the third man home at position four. Yet another dismal performance by Ramapati's standards. Because in our stable, people expect you to win all the time. You know, you can't win all the time in horse racing, you know. Uh, but so long as we put up a good performance, we are happy and win as many uh, races as we can during the year. Horse racing is, is it, it brings the whole population together. You can talk to uh, people in the south, in the north, in the west, in the east, they all know about horse racing. And, and, and it's one thing that everybody has an opinion on. Without horse racing, I think Mauritius will be missing a big, big thing. Horse racing is a very, very expensive sport. If you don't have the means, I won't advise anybody to, to be involved in the games. If you have the means and you race, you do it as a lover of horse flesh, but not as a, as a punter or as a gambler. Because if you gamble in this game, you don't last long. 